Welcome to Financial Focus, brought to you by Gulf Coast Financial Services founder and CEO, John Kirkendall. John and his team of financial, legal, and tax professionals have been providing North Florida savers and investors sound, comprehensive financial guidance for over 30 years, helping you to achieve important life and planning goals. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and tune in for more Financial Focus by visiting gulfcoastfinancial.net. Welcome into the program. This is Financial Focus, brought to you by the best of the best in financial services, as named by the readers of the Lake City Reporter, seven years and running, the team from Gulf Coast Financial Services, with uh, exceptional guidance and advice on what you should be doing with your money, what you should be paying attention to in the financial world in order to achieve and accomplish your important financial goals. Providing that insight on the program, as always, we turn to the CEO and founder of Gulf Coast Financial Services, 30 years providing this sound advice and guidance to Lake City area savers and investors, John Kirkendall. John, congratulations on another milestone in business. Well, thank you, Peter. Uh, you know, it seems like yesterday we started in a, a little house here in Lake City, and uh, it's just amazing how fast time's gone and how much uh, we've accomplished um, over those 30 years. But, you know, I, I, when I look back upon it and reflect, uh, to come from absolutely nothing to where we are today. Uh, it's truly fantastic. When I started Gulf Coast, I really didn't know that it was going to be the success it's going it's been or that we were going to be able to help as many people as we've helped. Now, John, on the program, you actually often comment on and and address the fact that not only has the world obviously changed in 30 years, but but the planning itself has undergone a lot of transformation and evolution. And you're doing things today that maybe you weren't doing, even as recently as 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, Peter, we're doing everything today that we didn't do 10 or 15 years ago. I mean, the whole uh, the whole environment's changed. Computers have been a great aid to us. But some of the software has actually been able to take that computer advice and concise it down to where it's in English and we all can read it without having voluminous volumes of printouts. So, you know, the tax planning we talk about, the Social Security planning, all those things that we talk about on this show are probably within the last six, seven years and some even sooner than that. So better, better advice, better guidance, more accuracy in, in some of the projections mm-hmm. and saving a lot of paper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I remember we used to print out that big book, you know, it was about 250 pages, had all these graphs and everything in it. And people, you know, they wouldn't read it. We'd read the synopsis of it. The information today is so much more detailed. It covers so many areas that everyone out there fixing to retire, everyone planning to retire needs to know. Retirement isn't simple. Planning for social security, planning for taxes, planning for how I'm gonna draw my money out of my accounts. All those things are complicated and everyone has replications back to other things that affect. I mean, you can mess up your uh, Part B Medicare supplement or Part B Medicare uh, really quick by doing certain things that you shouldn't do. People draw Social Security at 62 and then find out that they get penalized. It, you know, just because it's eligible at 62 doesn't mean you should take it if you're working. Yeah, uh, a lot of complexities, a lot of different aspects of planning for retirement that Almost mm-hmm. makes working for the paycheck seem easy at a certain <laughs> level. Uh, we, we've got it. We've got a finite amount of money. We've got to make it last and provide for everything that we envision <laughs> retirement to be about, and some of the what ifs and potential costs down the road. And so, continuing on the mission of providing confidence for savers and investors to move into and through retirement today john you've brought along your list are you ready to retire how would you answer these questions how prepared are you 12 questions one page boiling it down and ladies and gentlemen if you would like this report you can get that either in a digital format or on paper i'm sure they're uh, willing to provide that to you and, and and get it in your hands either physically or digitally if you'd like if you'd like this 
list. It's great to go over on your own time. 12 issues that you need to have a reasonable level of confidence in the fact that you've addressed them in order to retire and be prepared for retirement. If you'd like the list, pick up the phone, give a call 386-755-9018, 386-755-9018. But the real value, John and the team, they'll move through these issues with you. Make sure that you have addressed them and have that level of confidence. So John, let's let's move through the list now. Number one, do you know how long you would be able to generate the income you need if your paycheck stopped today? And I like this because it gives us a sense of perpetual preparedness, right? It's it's not yeah. when you retire, it's if it stopped today. And we talked a couple weeks ago that unfortunately some retirements happen unexpectedly. Well, that's right, Peter, through layoffs, downsizing, also through illness. I mean, we have to be prepared for the unexpected. And so if the only thing you are eligible for is disability social security, how are you going to be able to live for the rest of your life if you can't work? Um, or how are you going to be able to work or how to survive while we get that next paycheck, while we find that next job? You know, I, I was watching a movie last night about this mill that closed down and it devastated the whole community and everybody was moving and the jobs were few and far between. If that happened to you, how are you going to survive until you can find that next job? Yeah. And we, we need to know that along the way, but John, we intend to retire and we certainly need to have an answer for that (laughs) transition, which is planned and prepared for. So regardless, just, just, being cognizant that those things can happen unexpectedly. That's why planning as far in advance as possible is important. But certainly as we intend to make that transition uh, paramount to our confidence and to the reality of success for retirement. Number two, That's right. do you know how much you have available? Uh, in I'm sorry. Number two, have you identified and calculated your retirement income gap? This really goes into the how to begin to answer and address number one, not just a simple yes or no question, but how do we answer this question? Number two, have you identified and calculated your retirement income gap? Well, that's, that's it, Peter. What we look at, and we talked about this on every show just about is we look at the amount of money that we have guaranteed coming in. And then we look at our expenses that we know we're going to have each and every month. And when you look at those, the difference is your income gap. And so how are we going to make that up so that we know that our retirement will survive? Also, if I'm not retiring, but I'm, I'm disabled or something, how am I going to be? And we talk about number back to number one, how am I going to be able to cover that income gap? Where am I getting the money? How is it going to affect my retirement plan? Both of those kind of go hand in hand, whether we're working or whether we're, we're retired, but, Pre-retirees should start working on number two, that income gap, as soon as they're possible. You know, if we started 10 years before we thought we were going to retire, it would be a great time to get ready and not procrastinate. We could probably be more aware of what that income gap really is. One of those big (laughs) mysteries of retirement that has to be solved in order to have confidence in our retirement lifestyle and standard of living. And then the earlier we can get a jump on it, the better that we can address the potential for that income gap. Well, I think, Peter, one thing that we've decided is is that it's going to take as much money in retirement as I'm making now. So you can't say, well, I don't need to worry about my income gap because I'm going to be making, I'm going to need less in retirement. That's not the case these days. We need as much or more in retirement than we did when we were working. Yeah. And things tend to get more expensive over time as we have certainly, and in some cases, painfully seen this year, maybe more prevalent uh, recently than it has been historically, but inflation is an ever-present factor that we need to account for. Number three, John, is the reason why we need to address this one. Do you know how much you have available in discretionary assets above what you need to generate retirement income? You need those discretionary assets to continue working for you too, to help to address things like inflation. Well, that's right. Also, the things that are unexpected, the new roof, the new pool, whatever, you know, whatever the remodeling is, things are going to happen in life and they happen even in retirement. So we need to have that discretionary income. And as you know, Peter, 
we may need to pull from that discretionary income to make up for periods of time of high inflation and other things. I know, I don't know about you, but I won't let my gas go below a half a tank now because it hurts my pocketbook too much when I fill my truck. I've, I, I have uh, <laughs> seen that myself. And in fact, you know, uh, worst case scenario, at least, you know, you got half a tank's distance that you could get somewhere you need to go. Uh, number four, uh, we've talked about the fact, John, that money can only do a certain number of things. Can't buy love, can't buy happiness, but it can provide growth, safety, liquidity, and income. However, here's the thing, not a great multitasker. So that's what asset allocation and different locations mm -hmm. for your money is about. Do you know if your portfolio is properly positioned and diversified to provide enough of each of those growth, safety, liquidity, and income? Well, that's right, Peter. And unfortunately, too many people have their money in the safety bucket and not in the growth bucket or the income bucket. So we've got to make sure that we're diversified and we know what our dollars are doing for us and we put them strategically in the buckets that we need to have them in so that we can really grow our portfolio it's really disheartening when you see somebody with all of their money in cash making less than one percent when that there are other opportunities out there that are taking place that really don't have a lot of, of, of risk to them uh, number five, do you hold annual reviews of your plan to assess if you have met previous benchmarks and to set new goals and benchmarks as the world changes and evolves, as our own circumstance changes over time? John, we've got to make sure that the plan stays on track and prepares us for what's ahead. That's right, Peter. We got to make sure that everything is covered, uh, that we've done everything we can do to not procrastinate, but to make sure that we're living the plan because the closer we get to retirement, we really need to have that plan on track. We need to know that we're going to be able to have the kind of retirement that we want and need uh, and deserve. And the only way we can do that is by reviewing that plan every year, not letting it sit in the bucket or in the, in the, uh, in the drawer and not looking at it. We have to work it. The plan is only as good as the numbers and the effort that we put into it. We're talking once again with John Kirkendall, founder of Gulf Coast Financial Services, 30 years serving proactive savers and investors in North Central Florida, seven years and running being named best of the best in financial services by the readers of the Lake City Reporter. And we are covering the questions, the issues that you must address in order to know if you are ready to retire. Not like I'm so ready not to have to work anymore, but financially prepared for <laughs> retirement. And we've got a great list. It's a one page resource for you. If you'd like to get this list of the 12 major issues to know if you are ready and prepared for retirement, pick up the phone, give Gulf Coast Financial Services a call 386-755-9018, 386-755-9018. Number six on the list, John, you, you alluded to this earlier. Social security is complex. A lot goes into it. You've got some great ways to run different analysis and, and crunch the numbers, but uh, a big Big factor, have you formulated a plan for how to use Social Security to maximize income and protect your personal assets? That's right, Peter. You know, the thing is, is that we have the software available that shows us how to maximize Social, social Security. And then it gives us three different scenarios and shows us how much money we'd be giving up by taking either one of those scenarios. I just met with a couple last night and we were talking about when he could draw his social security and if it would affect his paycheck and all that. And then uh, we talked about when she could draw. And then what we're going to do next is take those numbers, put them into our tax software and explain to them the tax consequences for drawing at full retirement age versus waiting to age 70 when they're totally retired and not working. You can draw social security to your full retirement age, but don't forget, Peter, up to 85% of Social Security is taxable if you make too much money. So there may be, why, why pay if you're going to, if it's going to throw you, or why take it if it's going to throw you in another tax bracket and cause you to pay more money overall in taxes? It's uh, not what you make, it's what you keep. That includes with your social security and we know the tax man cometh. There's not generally a dollar that's made, grown, created, earned, spent, transacted that there's not some type of tax plan for. Now, 
some tax or some social security rather can potentially be tax free. But for most people that earn any kind of other income, it's going to be taxed at some level. A lot of people feel like it's taxed along the way. No, it's just held by the government for your benefit later on down the road when they begin to give it back. That's when it can potentially actually be taxed. Right, John? That's right, Peter. I mean, we haven't really paid taxes on it. I mean, we have. So therefore, when we take it out, a certain part of it could be te- subject to taxes. I know this morning I went in there and threw my folder in the in the Guftos tax room and said, "Here, good luck with this. Have fun," uh, <laughs> because it's complicated. Taxes are not as simple as we thought they were, and everything, like I said, it has a reaction, a chain reaction on something else. Um, and I can't wait for the government to send me my new Irma letter. Yeah. Well, well you know, what is the tax code up to 80,000 some odd pages now? It's, no, it's, yeah. it's not a simple document there. Uh, but no. this list is one page, 12 questions mm-hmm. to know if you're ready to retire. You got to have addressed each of these issues with some reasonable level of information, education to be confident in them. Number seven, do you know how you would cover the cost of medical and or long term care? care expenses should you or your spouse require or encounter them? Well, Peter, this is a big one because a lot of people think that when they get on Medicare, that it's free. Part A is free. That's the only thing we get free. Everything else has a cost. And a a couple in their late 60s, early 70s could be spending $1,000 a month for their Medicare Part B, their supplement, and their drug card. Now, that's in addition to co-pays and other things that we have. And if we get into a long-term care situation, Medicare doesn't cover long-term care. That's going to come out of pocket. And so we have to figure out ways to address this. I think the last study I showed, it was over $400,000 that a married couple could expect to spend on medical expenses during their retirement. Yeah. That's a lot of money. I I saw that as well. And that's really just on routine cost of care. As you mentioned, you know, Medicare, most people have premiums, have deductibles. It's very akin to health insurance, maybe at a discounted rate because we've been paying into it over the course of our lifetimes to, to get that benefit. But there are still costs associated with that, and it doesn't necessarily cover things like dental or vision. <laughs> uh, so there are, there are additional costs just of routine care. And then it's wrapped into one question or one issue of the 12 here on the list, John, but medical and long term care expenses really are two separate things because that $400,000 figure, that was just routine cost, not yeah. including the potential for long-term care if needed. Well, that's true, Peter. And if you look at the inflation and the cost of, uh, of employees and everything else, long-term care is going up. So where it may have been 7000 a month, last year, it's going to be 10000 a month this year. Mm-hmm. And so costs are going up. We have to have a way to cover that. And so there are some ways that we can do some hybrid investments so that we can cover more than one thing with a bucket and, and give them some long-term care. But if you have any money at all, the government is not going to help you because you have to spend your money down in order to get Medicaid which having ha- had a couple of clients that I've dealt with who have been on it, that's not the cure-all that everybody thinks it is. Letting the government decide where you, which, which home you're going to be in and how far away it's going to be and how much your spouse gets to keep, that's not a lot of fun. And uh, in, in, to another um, subject here uh, that, equally as important. Have you calculated how much income would be lost if you or your spouse pass away? The The, the issue of uh, survivorship income, spousal income mm-hmm. dependence is a real issue that often is not encountered until we, we lose the spouse. But we have to think about this issue as we are making these lifelong permanent decisions when we enter into retirement, not when we ultimately experience it, but well in advance. Well, if you lose a spouse, about 40 percent of your income is going to go away. Now, your expenses aren't going away. 
you may be able to downsize and and that, and that may cost you more because homes are rising, you know, rentals going up. But 40 percent is a lot of money to have a lot of income to lose because of the death of a spouse. And also a big thing in, in America these days is is divorce in the in the elderly over 65. It's you know, it's an all time high. So you have to consider what happens if I lose my spouse to death or divorce? How am I going to survive? How is he or she going to survive? And what do we need to do to make this work? So that's just something that we have to work on. And, you know, a lot of people, you'll be amazed, and I know you're not, that th- when you tell a person that if their spouse dies, they're only going to get one Social Security check. They're like, what do you mean? I don't get to keep both? Nope. Well, no, you only get the highest, if, you know, you don't get both of them. Yeah. And, and that's why the, the income streams can significantly change. And oh, by the way, also bumping into a higher tax bracket, going from married filing jointly to single head of household. So absolutely an essential issue to address. Um, moving to a, a more positive topic here, number nine on the list. John, we've been saving for decades, our, our entire lifetime. We've been looking at this balance on these statements on a sheet of paper. Now it's time to show me the money. How much cash flow can my portfolio generate for me to actually spend and enjoy retirement? We've got to figure that one out. Well, that's right, Peter. And the sooner we figure that one out, the better, because that goes back to the question we were talking about with uh, being safe. You know, I can be so safe that I don't generate any gains, and therefore I'm not going to have the kind of income that I need in retirement because my portfolio is not going to generate income. So we have to start early to know what our portfolio is doing and to watch it, manage it, diversify it, and to make sure that it's earning as much as it can. Because when I retire, that portfolio and and those income streams I have coming in are going to be my paycheck every month. Uh, you alluded to this one earlier, and that's why retirement planning is is pretty complicated. All of these are really interwoven. But uh, number 10 on the list, do you know the percent of your working income you'll need to support your lifestyle in retirement? Here's the thing about this one, John, is that retirement isn't often about replacing 100% of everything we were making during our working career. It's about replacing our ability to cover expenses and do the things that we want to do. However, what we're finding is that more and more often people are spending about what they're making. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You know, we used to, Peter, the the average used to be about 70% that I needed about 70% of my income in retirement to live comfortably. I haven't uh, planned with a client this year or last year that came in and said, okay, right now I'm making, I'm spending 10,000 a month. And when I retire, I'm only going to spend seven. Usually it's, I'm going to spend 10, but I may need to spend 12. Yeah. And so how are you going to give me that? Because, you know, we're a mobile society. We're in better shape than our parents who retired before us, and we do more things. I mean, I'm a member of this seniors camping group, and this group camps all the time and goes all over the place just listening to the stories of these 90-year-old women who are out by themselves camping. I mean, it's crazy, but we are mobile. We're in better shape. Our medical is better, and we're going to live longer. We know that. Uh, they just uh, downsized the required minimum distributions because of of longer living. They changed that table. So we're going to need more money. If we don't need more money on the day we retire, we're going to need more money for a longer period of time than any retirement but generation in our lifetime. Uh, We talked about this in terms of Social Security, but that's certainly not the only source of income that the government has some intentions to tax. Your 401k, your IRA, any distributions from uh, retirement accounts, they they have a tax plan, ladies and gentlemen, and it is not what you make, it's what you keep. Do you understand how much you will be paying in taxes in retirement and how much of your retirement account withdrawals you'll actually get to keep? John, if we have a... $4,000 a month cost of living. We can't plan on just withdrawing $4,000 a month of income. We've got to account for taxation. Something that was sort of taken care of behind the scenes during our working career 
before a lot of us even saw our money, the government had already taxed it and taken care of this issue. Yeah, that's right, Peter. We didn't even know how much it was. But, you know, the thing is, is that people just don't understand that we defer all this money and then we deferred it at a lower income. And then all of a sudden now we're going to be retired. We're going to be required by the government to start pulling that money out. We're going to need that money to live on and we're going to be taxed on it. And we're going to be taxed at higher rates in the future than we are now. We know that. Mm. So, you know, it's just taxes are a huge problem in retirement. And that's, you know, we're right now we're going through tax season and, and I'm, I'm amazed at the clients that come in and I tell them that we got to, we got to pay the government and they're saying, well, but why? And I'm saying, well, because you didn't withhold enough from your social security or you didn't take any withholding out of your pension. You can't just not withhold because you made the money. Right. There is nowhere in the tax code that says retirement is tax free. <laughs> unfortunately, no. unfortunately for for a lot of us, that's a shock because we were told to defer and delay paying taxes on our personal assets on the 401k because we would be paying less taxes in retirement. Less does not equal none. And for many of us, our income has gone up, our expenses have gone up. And in fact, we're seeing that it's it's not necessarily less that we're paying in retirement. Uh, we just delayed paying the taxes, but that bill is still there waiting for us. So you got to oh, understand yeah. that you got to calculate it. And, and John, you mentioned that we, we know taxes are going to go up. I've, I've heard that we believe we think they may, but actually in current law, they will. So right now is a great time to strategize to, to help address number 11 and, and keep more of our money. Mm-hmm. We know Peter that in 2026, that the tax code reverts back to the original tax code that well, was when Trump was in office. So those tax cuts that we're getting are going to be gone. And and I have a hard time trying to explain to clients why we should do this Roth conversion and pay taxes, which affect sometimes their Medicare and Social Security now. And, and we can get it. It'll be cheaper for us in the long run. Um, but taxes are going up. We know that. Well, if we can pay 12% as opposed to 15 or 22% as opposed to 25, the 3% savings might offset what could potentially be a small increase in Medicare premiums. But those are numbers that you really have to look at, sit down and crunch on a very specific individual basis and figure out what the right strategy is for you, ladies and gentlemen. But it certainly is one of the issues that you need to address in order to have confidence that you're prepared for retirement or you're doing the best things in retirement. Kind of bringing it on home, John, this is where all of these things come together. Do you have a retirement income allocation plan in writing well we talk about this every show is that we need an income allocation plan that shows us how our income is going to be allocated what our portfolio is going to do and we can come up with this income plan that we talk about that shows us how we're going to have sustainable predictable income that's going to last us for retirement and give us the growth that we need so that we can have that retirement that we want. And if we're short, then how are we going to make it up? Do I work longer? Do I have to defer more now? What am I going to do? How am I going to, how am I going to save so that I can have the retirement I want? And that's why Peter, I say the sooner we start on this, the better. You don't have to be 65 to start on this plan. You really should start when you're 50. And we should be working towards that retirement. Now that the kids are gone, and well, their kids are never gone. Let me take that back. But the kids are out of, out the, of the house. house. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and everything's good with you and your wife. Go ahead and sit down. Let's get that income worked out. I, I think it was a Stephen King novel. Sometimes they come <laughs> back, right? <laughs> uh, oh, trust me. <laughs> it's it's, it's uh, like kids these days. Sometimes they come back. Well, these these issues, John, are, are things that you have been helping people work through. They're at Gulf Coast Financial Services for 30 years and the last seven years and running been named as best of the best in financial services by the readers of the Lake City Reporter because you raise awareness to some of these issues that unfortunately 
often get overlooked during the course of our working career, but can't be a blind spot, can't catch us by surprise if we are going to have lasting retirement confidence. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, you need to pick up this list at the very least. Check over it on your own time. See how confident you feel in answering and addressing all 12 of these questions to indicate, are you prepared for retirement? And if, if there are any that you're not 100% confident on, well, that's what the team from Gulf Coast Financial Services is here for to help you through them to formulate an answer as they do each and every day for savers and investors and and proactive planners in North Central Florida. Pick up the phone, give a call, uh, 386-755-9018, the number to reach Gulf Coast Financial Services, 386-755-9018, 386-755-9018. You can also go online, Gulf Coast Financial dot net gulf coast financial dot net fantastic resources tools calculators reports available there on the web page but as always the team is your number one resource give them a call to set up a complimentary review a planning strategy session or just request the list if you'd like to go over these 12 issues to know if you're prepared for retirement again on your own john always a pleasure any any final closing thoughts as we have uh, covered this list well peter i just wish i'd had somebody go through this list with me before, you know, back when I was 50, it would have made a huge difference in my knowledge and my understanding. And also probably I would have saved a little more money than spent money, uh, you know, enjoying myself back then. But uh, we didn't do that back then. Guy call you on the phone, say, Hey, I got a stock for you. And you'd buy the stock at stock or lose money. And then you'd sell the stock. (laughs) And so things have changed fiduciary wasn't a word that we heard back in the 70s and the 80s. And I think that the government has done a really great job in making sure that we put the client's interest first in everything that we do. Well, three generations of planning there under the roof at Gulf Coast Financial Services. Just think uh, 30 years in service of savers and investors. Those that are turning 65 now, Jonathan, they had gotten this information back at 35. What great shape they could (laughs) have been in or are as a result of of the proactive guidance that they have received and, and the confidence level from answering and addressing important topics like what are included on this list. Once again, if you'd like your copy of this list, or if you would like to take advantage of the opportunity for that complimentary planning review and strategy session, where John and the team at Gulf Coast Financial Services will go through these issues with you, pick up the phone and give a call. 386-755-9018, 386-755-9018, gulfcoastfinancial.net. John Kirkendall, founder, CEO, and your resource here on the program, our resource for proactive guidance, insight, and advice. We always appreciate the time, John. Thank you, Peter. It's great to be here. Have a good week. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and tune in for more financial focus by visiting gulfcoastfinancial.net. The information presented on this program is provided for informational purposes only, without warranty of accuracy, completeness, or suitability for a particular purpose. This program is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, legal, or tax advice. This information is general in nature and not specific enough to be construed as advice. You should not make any decision based on the information presented on this program without independent consultation with an appropriately licensed professional or competent advisor. Investment in securities or the market involves a potential risk for loss of principal. Trading, therefore, may not be suitable for all listeners. Annuity guarantees are based only on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing company. Withdrawals of growth from annuities may be taxable as ordinary income in the year it is taken. Individuals should review contracts for specific details of the product's features and costs. Early withdrawals may subject the owner to penalties, fees, or taxes. John Kirkendall is registered with and securities are offered through Kovac Securities, Inc., member FINRA SIPC, found online at www.kovacsecurities.com. Advisory services are offered through Gulf Coast Financial Services, Inc., a registered investment advisor in Florida. Gulf Coast Financial Services, Inc. is not affiliated with with Kovac Securities, Inc. or Kovac Advisors, Inc. Past performance is not indicative of future results. All investing involves risk. Investment decisions should be based on your own goals, time horizon, and tolerance for risk. Due to various factors, including changing market conditions and or applicable laws, the content may no longer be reflective of current opinions or positions.